All right, let's see what we can add uh, Ben here. Ben, are you still here? Okay, let me see. Sorry. Invite a friend. Then we're going to go to Ben. And we're done. Invited Ben, let's see what happens. How do I, there you go, Ben, I'm like, you should be all set. Okay. Hey Ben, how's it going? What's up, brother, do you see me? Yes, I can. My lighting is a little, a little bit bright on that end. Let me turn this light down. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Was... What's up, Joey? What's going on? How's everything? Happy, happy Thursday, bro. I'm doing yeah. out of this world incredible. How are you? It's good. It's hot in my. It's hot in Massachusetts. Is it hot in Miami? Oh, it's hot, but. I like the heat. I like the sweat. So I was just uh, in my patio uh, a little while ago on a phone call, just with my shirt off, getting some sun. So I like that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. You're you're a big uh, proponent of the sun, right? Vitamin D, right? Big proponent of the sun. Not getting burned, but getting enough of the vitamin D. I do something called uh, naked sunbathing. So I'll go out there for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and, and take off my clothes and just let that sun go on my, get on my body. I'm telling you, it's good for guys because your testosterone goes up as well. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I might try it privately. Just be careful around with your neighbors. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Uh, if, if the group is here, uh, let me see if there's any viewers. But we're going to just, you know, I appreciate you coming in here. I, I started this group. Um, I started keto probably like February or intermittent in February. And just start going from there. Start losing weight. I start seeing the difference and how my energy level is different, my body fat percentage going down, and it's just like my workout's different, um, but, and people start noticing it. I'm always saying, like, I don't talk about it until people ask me, right? And uh, when they ask me, that's when I start giving it to them, because I don't want to be that guy. It's like, hey, you should do keto, you should do this, you should do that type of thing. It's like, when they're ready, they see the changes. I let my results do the talking, and then they get interested. So I a lot of people said, uh, start asking and then start saying, like, you know what? I said, I want to do what you do because it looks like it's working for you. And I said, okay, sure. So I give them a, a quick regimen of what I do and how I do it. And then a lot more people start coming in. And then, you know what? Let me start a group and see what happens. Start with 20 people, 100, 200. Now I'm up to three. And people are just really interested. And, and with this type of lifestyle, this type of... Uh, uh, way of eating or way of life or is it's, 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 it's not the norm as we know, right? It's not the norm. It's like, you know, right. it's all different. So um, they just want a little bit more support. That's why I created it. So my idea was get more people like experts and you know, uh, like you guys to come in and talk to the group a little bit and see what's going on. Um, this light is actually pretty hot. So I'm, I'm sweating. But, uh, you know, it, it really helps them. And then they, I, I try to stay, uh, let the group stay motivated, you know, trying to get some content for them, uh, you know, workout-wise, diet-wise, and so on. I think your information will add so much more content to this group and knowledge that will keep them going, you know. So just tell me about, like, how you get started, like, Miami. Like, uh, do you, are you always from Miami? Yeah. Well, f well first of all, I want to acknowledge you for – doing some research and experimenting with the ketogenic diet and fasting. Like you said, it's not the normal. It's not what most people do. It's not what the masses are doing, although it is getting more popular. It's just yeah. not what the masses are doing. So I acknowledge you for studying, researching. And then at the end of the day, the only thing that matters are the results that you're getting. So you're yeah. getting good results. You created a Facebook group. It grew to over 300 people. Now you're sharing your journey with them. They're sharing their journey with you, you're supporting each other. That's awesome. I, I want to just say thank you for putting that together and I acknowledge you for doing that and, and having the courage to put your, your story out there because a lot of people, they don't have that courage. So thank you, first of all, and, and thank you.
we happens for the videos. So to answer your question, um, yeah, I'm born and raised in Miami Beach, Florida. Uh, lived here my whole life. I'm 33 years old now. And, uh, you know, what you see now, you see somebody who's very lean, healthy, but growing up, uh, I was always the fat kid. Uh, I was the kid who was bullied, the kid who was picked on, the kid who had low self-confidence, low self-esteem. I was actually obese growing up, and uh, I was addicted to food, addicted to video games, addicted to drugs, and uh, just a lot of bad things, addicted to the wrong people that I was hanging out with. And uh, it wasn't until I was 24 years old that I actually woke up. And uh, I say woke, uh, I woke up because I, I believe that for most of my life, I was just... For most of my life, I was tiptoeing my way through life, yeah. hoping to make it safely to death. And I was just going through the motions and never really originating a creative thought. And at the age of, 30, of 24, if my heart would have stopped beating, it would have just been a mere formality because I was not living a life true to my highest values with my health and, and my career and the things I wanted to do. So I went through a bad breakup. When I was 24, I got dumped from my ex-girlfriend and I was rock bottom, depressed, suicidal thoughts. And there's beauty when you hit that rock bottom. I'm sure some people can relate because there's nowhere to go but up. As far down as I was down there, I knew I could go the other way back up. So I used that as a springboard to launch from. Took care of my health first, took responsibility for the first time in my life over my health. Up until that point, Joey, I was blaming I was blaming my slow metabolism. I was blaming my genetics. I was blaming the president. I was blaming the traffic. I was blaming anything and everyone except for myself. I was not taking personal responsibility. And I was just complaining enough, but not changing. And we see it all the time. We hear people complain about their weight, and then they're eating sugar every three hours. Yeah. We see people complain about not making enough money at their job, and they spend their paycheck on alcohol. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't make any sense. That was me, and I'm not judging anybody. That, that was me. And I relate this complaining and not doing anything to the story about the dog on the nail. Have you heard that story before? I think you had the Facebook Live, but I haven't, had it to, I haven't uh, seen it. But please, I would like to hear it. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a quick story. So it's about this young boy who moved to this new neighborhood, and he was walking down the street, and he saw this old man, this old woman on their rocking chair, on their porch, just walking back and forth. And he, kept, and he heard a dog. Uh, like howling and, and moaning and in, in pain. He heard this dog in pain. He was wondering what was going on in that house. Anyways, he walked. He kept going on his way. The next day, this young boy heard it again, and he was wondering, like, what's going on with this dog? Now, the next day, he said, if he hears this dog whining again, he's going to go ask and find out what's going on with this dog. So lo and behold, he walks by this house, and he hears the dog again, and he walks up to the old man and the old woman, and he goes, excuse me, what's going on with your dog? Is your dog Okay. And the, the, the lady says, oh, child, he's laying on a nail. And it, and it hurts just enough for him to complain about it, but not enough for him to get up and move. So <laughs> that was me. I was laying on a nail complaining about my life, but not doing anything about it. So my uh, plea to you and anybody watching this, actually, is to get off the nail and take control of your circumstances. I did that. Nine months later, I changed my my diet and my, my, my habits and my lifestyle. Nine months later, I went from obese to fit. I had six pack abs, 34% uh, body fat to 6% body fat, a size 38 waist in my pants to size 30. Completely transformed wow. my life, got ripped. More importantly though, Joey, I transformed my, my mentality. I, I, I achieved a mental six pack. I think that's much, much more important than a physical six pack. And that was 10 years ago. I started my first company, Shred Fat, opened up a CrossFit gym in Miami. My dad got sick and I uh, experienced his health decline and he ended up passing away, which really revealed my purpose. And I got into ketogenic and fasting about five and a half years ago when I started really um, doing some research to what our ancestors got, uh, did and how they thrived. And, and I started studying that and practicing it and then teaching my clients. So in a nutshell, that was my story, Joey. Well, I, I think that story is pretty awesome. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think it's some of your stories kind of relate to me as well. Like, uh, I, uh, it, it's funny because I, I'm a bit, I'm a, I became a vegetarian because of gout, right? I stopped eating meat because of gout because I didn't want to take the medication. But the problem with being a vegetarian is that most of our food is carbs. Like a lot of our food is carbs. I only feel full when it's carbs, like bread, pasta, rice. 
same difference. That's the only thing. I, only, I don't stop eating until I feel full and from a sick to my stomach. And then um, I, I joined Lifetime Gym. Uh, I, I think they have one in Miami. And I just yeah. didn't I didn't care about I didn't care about my diet because I was like I was lifting I was feeling great I was like, getting stronger I was like I didn't care it's like I was like this is working I eat well, I eat junk food but I get to lift heavier but then I keep looking at myself on the picture like when, when my my some of the photos that I look at uh, my daughter with me and stuff like that. I was like man I'm big I was like I'm with, I was in denial I was like I have a I have a big gut I had a big gut and I was in denial I'll be like posing like you know like sucking my stomach and I was like man I have a big gut I was like I'm looking at them now, I was like, I do have a big cut. And I was in denial the whole time. And really, like, the idea of it is, like, I always tell this group, they, they can, you can go look at my old videos. I said, you have to be ready. It's like, you have to be ready. Nobody will tell you that you should do this, you should do that. It's your mind. It's your mind is when you're ready. I always tell them that. It's like, yeah, this, this whole thing is like, you know, nothing's going to happen until you, they, you tell yourself, your mind will tell you, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. And I always like tell this group, I said, slowly. It's like, what do you, what do you, like, what do you think about our approach? Like, I always tell this group to take it slowly. It's a long journey. If you haven't worked out in a while, do like walks, do an hour walk, 30 minute walk, you know? And the diet wise, um, here's my regimen. I'll give you a regimen so you can yeah. All the new members get into the group, they get 12 hour fasting and 12 hour eating window. And we try to get them to eat, stop eating by 5 p.m. If that doesn't work, then they go uh, 7, 8, or 9. But as long as they do 12-hour window, they're good. And then three meals a day is my, my regimen to them. Um, you know, no snacking, stop, stop practicing the no snacking part. And then once they get used to that and start cutting off the carbs, cutting off the sugar, uh, you know, they start working on more greens, more, uh, less protein, uh, less carbs, and high fat, right? So that's yeah. my regimen for you guys. And then once they get used to it, I move into the 16 hour. A lot of the group here on the 16 hour, 16 eight journey, and the badass one really go for like 18, 20, 20 hours uh, a day. So you know, they, they're just so comfortable and they're not hungry. Um, you know, and, and it's what's great about this diet. But, um, you said you own a CrossFit gym, right? You own yeah, I did. I did. I actually sold it um, a few weeks ago to do you some did. more. Yeah, I sold it a few weeks ago. But yeah, the, the name of the gym is called Live Free CrossFit. It's still here. Uh, I'm on Instagram Live, too. Um, okay. And uh, just reading the comments here. Hi, hi guys. Yeah, I like your approach. I like your approach uh, when it comes to having people uh, start the fasting. It's similar to what I teach to just first have an eating window of 12 hours and then a fasting window of 12 hours. Some people, most people could do that. Some people cannot. Yeah. So those who cannot, who are just so metabolically broken, I'll have them first do their normal way of eating They're in terms of like when they eat, but remove some of the carbs and yeah. eat more fats. And, and what that does, it keeps the insulin levels low, right? It keeps and teaches the body to keep the insulin levels low. And then you can start doing the fasting. A good way to test see if somebody is metabolically broken if their hormones are wonky is to skip a meal and see how you feel right if you have somebody who just joined the group and they're like oh i'm not sure if i'm fat adapted the easy test is for them to okay go go skip lunch tomorrow and get back to me how did you feel did you feel great did you feel like you were actually more alert and focused or were you hungry did you want to punch somebody in the face you had brain fog if it was the latter they are totally metabolically damaged and they need to start slow like you said progressively but yeah, you don't just start, you don't just, just say, oh, I want to run a marathon and, and you never run in your life. And then you go and you run five miles, you're going to, you're going to get, you're going to beat yourself up. So you want to just start slow. Maybe you'll run for 15 minutes and then 30 minutes. Like you said, build it up. So I like that approach. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah. Cause like, uh, it's like a lot of the group, a lot of the people in this group are, uh, some of them are, are, are like me, go to the gym goers. Some of them like you haven't been to it or they had a time never really had a regimen so there's nothing right. i mean they just you know they're just not into that it's like for me it's like working out was part of me so uh i've been working out since i was like 16 or whatever until military life or whatever but you know it's just part of me um but you know it's at the end of the day i'll be honest with you it's the diet <laughs> you know what i mean it's like you can work out all you want and you can do cardio crap if you don't change your diet it's gonna happen 
um, but I'm, I'm grateful that. But um, as a, a reason I brought up the CrossFit thing is that I know paleo was huge in CrossFit community. Like I, I think the last couple of years, past years, all you hear is paleo, pro high protein, high protein, high, high fat. Yeah, I never do it because I was I was vegetarian or pescatarian, so it's like it was more impossible for me. But a lot of people have success to it. But now that ketogenic is up there and people are like trying to be the keto is more mainstream, do you think a lot of the paleo people are moving to it or did you just do like a cycling part, like some paleo, some ketogenic um, diet in a way, yeah. mixed diet now? I think that um, there's going to be those people that are out there that are just going to go with the, with the trends and the fads. But I, I also believe this is going to surprise you, but I also believe that every diet works. Every single diet works, just not long term. Yeah. I mean, if you think about how many times maybe somebody watching this has started a new, a new diet and they got great results initially, or they heard about their friend who became a vegetarian or a vegan and they started getting incredible results. Yeah, that's true. But their genetics, our genetics, it's going to determine how long we can do that diet for strict. I don't even think I, I love the ketogenic diet because it, 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 it mimics our ancestors, but it's not good to do strict long term. Yeah, because um, what happens is you need the insulin spike from carbs to convert different hormones, right? You need it to convert the, th the inactive form of thyroid T4 to the active form of thyroid T3. So without insulin, you can't make that conversion and different estrogen conversion. So if you're ketogenic, which is great in there, you're in ketosis for two months, three months, six months, some people, a year, you are going to have some uh, uh, detrimental counter counterintuitive results, counterproductive results. So you need to throw in a feast day, which I do. I, I have a feast day and I follow uh, what, I, what I call diet variation. So diet variation is what I practice myself and what I have a lot of my uh, clients, my health coaching clients follow this approach. And I, I put it in my new book that's coming out, but it's, it's five days of intermittent fasting. Okay. So five days, 16 to 18 hour fast. Yeah. And during your eating window, you're eating ketogenic. So you're in a state of ketosis for these five days for sure. Okay. One day you're doing a 24 hour fast. So you're still going to be in ketosis because you're not eating anything. Yeah. Right. So that's five days intermittent fasting, one day, 24 hour fast. And then we have one day left, right? That seventh day, that's the feast day. You, I don't fast. I have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no snacking, but breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But I, I flip the, the script and I have high healthy carbs, like 200 grams or more, low fat, moderate protein, because when you do this, you're teaching your body that there's going to be an insulin spike and you have glucose as fuel. But when you stay ketosis for too long, your body starts to get really clever. And a lot of people who are too strict with ketosis, yeah. they end up not being able to burn any belly fat and actually start gaining belly fat because the human body starts to really get clever when it's, and when it's only being, uh, when it's only using fat for fuel, it starts to get really clever and it starts to preserve its only fuel source, which is fat. So it actually slows down fat burning. It, it sends a signal to your cell membranes and it, and it drives water in your cells and it slows down fat burning because it's only getting fat for fuel. So it's, it's uh, concerned about that when it's too long of a time. So when you throw in your feast day and you have carbs, you teach your body, oh, don't worry, I have a, this glucose and insulin spike, you could continue burning fat. It's like having 50 logs for the winter, right? Only you're, you're gonna hold on to these logs until the winter arrives because it's only 50 logs. But if you throw in a feast day, it's like giving yourself 200 logs and then you're going to be more likely to burn some other logs. So that's what it's like when you throw in that diet variation. And that's really the key because it, it mimics our ancestors because they were forced in ketosis yeah. and then they feasted on carbs sometimes to get out of ketosis. So it forces that adaptation. That, you know, it's funny because like, uh, I think there's, there's one, um, one interview, uh, one of the keto guys on, on YouTube, I forgot the name. I'll, I'll bring it up, find it. Uh, but he's, he, he also kind of like, uh, kind of like your J Jason, uh, Dr. Fung, uh, doc, yep. he, he talked about a lot of his clients, he won't even put them in full ketosis. They just uh, want to be a little bit in the ketogenic, like on their ketones to be like uh, one point something. They don't even want to go higher than that. 
And I was like, that was kind of interesting because he said, uh, I don't want them to go full keto because I think it's somewhat to what you said is that um, he doesn't want his body, their body to just get used to it and, and the body will adapt to it. I think that's what, that's pretty much what you were trying to say, right? If, I'm, if I get it correctly, your body will adjust to whatever you're eating until you just like find a way to conserve that energy, conserve that source uh, of energy or, or source of food, right? Did I get that right? Did I, did I, did yeah, I, exactly. Yeah, you nailed it. Because like, what I notice now with the OMAD people, I'm part of the OMAD group and some, some, some group on Facebook. And then, which, which, stands, which stands for one meal a day. One meal a day, yes. Uh, one yes. meal a day. And then I was part of the um, intermittent fasting with Dr. Uh, Eric Berg. And I noticed too, I mean, I noticed myself that there's a plateau. After you go strict um, for, I was strict keto for February until May, maybe. And then I started, and I probably cheated, but I was like really, really strict. And I hit a plateau. And that plateau was hard. And people could think, keep at it, keep at it. I'll be honest with you, the only time I'm actually able to break it is when I did a ridiculous calorie deficit. Like not, I, I probably did like a 500 calorie a day and fasted. And that's the only time I was able to break it. And the only thing I can think of, if you correct me if I'm wrong, is that my body got used to it and it stopped, it stopped conserving, like burning that much fat or it stopped burning that much calorie. Is that, is that, do you think that would be the case or, or I mean that up in my, in my yeah, it sounds like that's exactly what happened. It sounds like your body uh, started to realize that your only fuel source is fat because you were in a state of ketosis for too long and then it, it slowed down fat burning. That's, it's, that's the physiology of it. So um, you forced the adaptation with a very, very low calorie and fasting um, day. I would love for you to throw in a, um, uh, a day where you throw in high carbs, high healthy carbs, yeah. maybe, once a, maybe once a week or once every two weeks. That'll, that'll do the trick for sure. Okay. Because... Because like it's, it's a lot. Like you've seen it too. I mean, I'm sure you've seen a group like, you know, like they plateau and they'll plateau for like months. They'll, they'll skip, they won't move. But they, you know, they're also, there's, there's also people that move, but, you know, their, their belly is getting uh, smaller, you know, their waist is getting smaller. So I, for me, I think it's more like on a metab metabol metabolism side, to be honest with you. My body just reacted. But at uh, one time, I cheated, like I had a big bowl of pho, and I fasted the next day, dropped all the way. I dropped yeah. like four pounds in, 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 in one day. It was like the funniest thing. And, uh, yeah, interesting. And, and I think that somebody was talking about the whoosh effect. Do you believe in the whoosh effect? Is that true? I'm not sure what that is. It's like they said, like, you know, it's like, um, uh, it's called the whoosh effect. It's like... Uh, um, you hear a lot with the ketogenic crew is that when your body, when you plateau, they always tell you like keep going, keep going. Once your body, once your body figure out there's no more fats or, or calories or water coming in, it will start flushing out all the, actually it will start flushing out all the water out of the fat cells and the fat cells will kind of slim down a bit and that's when you're going to start losing more weight. Um, it's called the wish effect, W-O-H-O-O-S-A. That's what they call it. Uh, I've seen it a lot. I don't know if it's true, uh, uh, like scientific or not. Always just, so I don't know if you heard of it or what. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with that with that terminology, but um, I, I'm curious to do some research into that. It makes sense, though. It makes sense that your body is going to start shrinking its fat cells and using its fat for fuel, yeah. right? That's what it does. So that makes sense to me. Because they said, like you know, when when you're when you're still like on a, on a trying to do the diet, your body's still like retaining all that liquid in their fat cells. So when you stop, the body figure out there's no more uh, liquid or, or fats coming in, they're strength and they'll pull out all the water. That's good. anyway, and people yeah. buy it. So it could be scientific, it could be work. I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, totally. I'm gonna check it out. It's interesting. Yeah, it's called the Bush effect. Um, all right, and then. My next question is for females. Um, a lot of people says, um, I know like uh, it's like people it's like uh, people are against like women should do, shouldn't do fast or whatever, but you know, that's pretty much the bunk. My question is, um, women have different hormonal systems than us than men, 
and sometimes and they all have they all have and some things are red because uh, a lot of people in my group are women, uh, strong kind of women, and uh, a lot of things I read is like they should carb up during their cycle, and that will help them. But because something about when they're in their cycle, they burn more fat, they need more energy, they need more calories of course for it. Have you heard anything like that? Uh, that they should carb up a bit or carb intake during their cycle? Yeah, I actually I tell that to my female. Um, clients, my, my health coaching clients, that the week leading up to their period, that I want them to have that week, a high carb week, because you're right, the, 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 the different hormonal changes that happen, there needs to be insulin for the conversions of that, which includes some of the thyroid uh, conversions, which helps burn fat. So totally, I think that for that week leading up to it, or a few days leading up to it, they that that it's a good idea to have a lot of high healthy carbs okay. and get out of that keto uh state for sure Ke uh, ketosis state for sure so it's like it's good to carb up when you start feeling it's coming and then do they still continue a little like uh, a little bit more carb during or only prop before, before if they get if they get really intense cravings yeah, yeah because that, that's a sign that your body needs that stuff uh, but you know stick with the healthy stuff like uh, dark chocolate and sweet potatoes and yams and uh, fruit things th things that are healthy but you still get that carb fix. Okay, because I because I I always give them a pass as you when you're because I'm not a female so I was like I, I read a lot of things what what happens in the body so I said it's okay if you're craving chocolate have dark chocolate if you're craving exactly sweet you know I said have a hail of ice cream or something like that or. But the, 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 I, I, we just got, I don't know about the hell of ice cream. I never tried it, but supposedly there are like less cars. What do you think about the hell of ice cream? Doing? Uh, good, good cheat, bad cheat. <laughs> yeah, I, I cheat with that sometimes. I think that it's fine. Uh, I mean, it's not the healthiest thing, but it's better than a lot of other ice cream. So I'm okay with that. Okay, good. So yeah, so that's the pass I give them because I don't want them like, you know, getting like, because it's already hard enough to be in that situation for them. And I don't want them getting discouraged once they eat. Yeah, I want you want to be continue. sympathetic. Yeah, I want them to continue. You know, it's like it's it's some some are uh, tough. Uh, what else? What is this? Plateau. We talk about plateau. We talk about uh, wish effect. Um, so just just talk about your. Um, do you want to talk about your book uh, to the group and see if, if you if they would like to uh, get a copy? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I came out with a book called The Intermittent Fasting Cheat Sheet, Discover uh, How This Ancient Practice Can Transform Your Health. As we all know, it can transform. It's a powerful tool. And uh, I've been doing it. I've been doing fasting, intermittent fasting, prolonged fasting, block fasting, whatever you want to call it, different variations of fasting for five years now on myself, uh, on my clients, and also researching it, attending functions, and just really learning about how powerful it is. So over this five year period, I've been asked so many questions surrounding fasting. It's a lot of, some people are like, they think I'm nuts. Some people are really intrigued by it, but I receive so many questions. So I thought of compiling a book that answers the top 20 questions that I received over the last five years. So I, I, I answer the top 20 questions and, and, I bat, and I, my, my answers are backed by science. And uh, it's a very easy read. You could read this book in like 30 minutes it, it, I put it on Amazon a, a month ago, and it became a bestseller. It hit number one in the world in its right. category. And I'm giving it away for free to those in this group. So if you go to um, the uh, – what is it? Fastingcheatsheet.com. That's what it is. Fastingcheatsheet.com. Okay. You can get the book. I'll, I'll type it down in the comments. But if you go to fastingcheatsheet.com, you can get it sent to your email directly. And it's going to answer a lot of your questions. It's also going to confirm – a lot of your, the things you're doing. And uh, fasting is a powerful, powerful tool. It's the most powerful tool I've come across in all my years of research. But also, it's a tool. It's not the end of everything. Just like a chainsaw is a tool. A chainsaw could be a powerful tool that's helpful, and it could be a powerful tool that could be dangerous. So you got to do it the right way. You got to surround yourself with people who know what they're doing, like Joey and this group, and, and my book will help. Uh, but if you do it right, I mean, it's going to be a game changer for your health and longevity and fat loss, and the list is on and on and on. Seriously, I think I think um, me, uh, Sandra, and I were were actually uh, she um, 
we were texting each other yesterday and she said she needed a little bit of more space to go to the gym. So I, 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 I helped her out. We, we worked out together. I was going to do yoga, but it was a crazy, it was called a hit yoga. So I was like, I wasn't ready for that. So we went to, uh, on the stairs and we were just talking about, you know, how fasting really changed a lot of things in our life and in our metabolism and our health. And, and the mind itself is the, the most fascinating thing and the energy that I got from fasting or for keto is, is the steady amount of energy I have all day. Uh, that's the most fascinating thing I, I like about it. Yeah. And with the keto, that I, the hunger goes away, so I'm not really hungry all the time compared to when you were you're doing a lot of carbs so you're pretty much going crazy but every two hours or every three hours you want to yeah you have to like munch or something right so the benefits of fasting i think it's in, it's incredible um in regards to that though i see a lot of people who in one meal a day but doing like long fast 18 to 20 hour fasting um but if they eat like crap they eat like pizza they eat like burgers they eat like fries is that just can they sustain such thing? Is that, is that a good thing as well? Or is that, it's pretty much like they're just hoping the fat will fix everything. It's not, a, it's not a healthy approach, but it's much, much better than eating all that frequently throughout the day. Yeah. If, they're just, if they're gonna eat that anyways, it's much, much healthier to eat it in one meal, even if it's the same amount of calories than it is in smaller meals throughout the day. So if you're gonna eat that stuff, might as well put it in one meal instead of throughout the day. Now it's not the healthiest thing to do. You could do a lot better by eating healthier. You get more benefits that way. But but I I'm a fan of that as opposed to all day eating. It's it's a better alternative than I mean it's still hard. It's not easy. I mean it's fasting for 20 hours and then having one meal a day. It's still a it's a still a game changer and it's not that easy coming to it. Uh, but totally. you know, I, I was just like, I was just really surprised. I was like, you know, they're doing all this work, and I was like, man, and then you're gonna eat like this big bowl of fries, I, you know? And yeah. She's like, you'd be sleeping right after. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. Oh. So I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else is? Uh... Yeah. So Ben, I, I think I, I thank you for your time. Maybe we can do it again uh, next month. And uh, you know, I think you said you're working on another book, so maybe we we can. Uh, talk about your next book or just you know um guys you have to follow ben on facebook follow ben on instagram he comes up with like such great content his motivational stuff every day is insane he's like you just want to like boom go once you hear him talk on about motivational <laughs> stuff it's, it's really encouraging and uh he's on it every day he's on it he's in the hustle he works hard uh you know trying to motivate people and uh, Ben, I appreciate your help. Uh, I think we should do it again. Uh, you know, uh, what do you think? We should do it again? Yeah, man, this is this is fun. And uh, I want to say hello to I think Sandra's on here. Jennifer. Hi. Uh, I want to thank you, Joey, for having me. We'll do it again next month for sure. Send me a request, guys. I'm very um, accessible. I would love to help you out in any way, shape or form. You can message me anytime. I do post daily. Uh, and also my next book, it's going to be lights out like really incredible and i don't want to toot my own horn but i've been writing in this book writing from this book and researching every single day for months and it's it's this book that already came out last december but it's the second edition so this book is just a simple booklet it's like 70 pages i'm adding another 100 pages to it i'm going to re-release this and it's going to be the second edition of the perfect health booklet but there's an entire chapter all about fasting the i call it the inner physician right your your body the inner physician and I'm telling you, like, the research that I'm putting into this chapter alone, it's, it's, it's one of the greatest um, chapters on fasting that you ever come across. It could be an entire book. So definitely stay tuned with, about that. It should be released maybe in the next two or three months. I'm going to post about it for sure. Well, it's like, it's, you know, it's like, I, I like your, I like the cheat sheet. It's like, it's very quick, very, you know, I was able to go through it. And, like, and you come out of it, it's like, you know, getting all this info in, in, in one sitting. I really appreciate it. And guys, uh, Ben is kind enough to share his uh, uh, cheat sheet, um, intermittent fasting cheat sheet. Um, ben, if you can just comment on it later uh, so I can share the link or send me the link and I'll post it in our group and they can start downloading it. Yeah, I'll post it in the comments below after we hang, uh, finish this call. It's, it's fastingcheatsheet.com. And then if you guys get the book, 
And if you could write me an Amazon review when you're done with it, I would really appreciate that. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for joining us. Jennifer, Jennifer is on vacation in Azor? Azor or Portugal? Azor. So, oh, so sweet. Fun. Enjoy. All right. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Joey. Have a great day, brother. Bye-bye.